Welcome everyone to the Stacks journey. I've uh, been planning this um, video series for quite a while. It's taken me a bit of time to build up confidence with the Stacks technology, or should I say electrostatic ear speakers, to get to understand it, how it works, and um, feeling like I have the confidence to just push ahead with this um, entire thing. So, I thought we would start off the series by introducing you to electrostatic ear speakers, the technology, what we're trying to do, and where this video series is going to head. And um, yeah, and then we're gonna, it's gonna be a few different parts. We've already done a part on this um, uh, energizer here, which we, which we rebuilt, uh, but we're going to be taking it quite a bit further than that into areas that um, I had to look very hard to find other people that have done this sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, let's just start with stacks. Well, what are they? So they are commonly known as electrostatic ear speakers. Now you've got your normal headphones, which are dynamic drivers. You have your magnetic planars, and then you have these. Three different technologies, there may be more, I don't know, but these are the, the big ones. Now, these are made by Stax. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. They are sort of the OG, original uh, company to invent this alien technology. Uh, there are since been other brands that have come on board, like Dan Clark and hi fi -Man. Uh, there's probably some others as well. Well, there actually are others, but I can't remember what they are at the moment. So you're wondering, well, what the hell are electrostatic ear speakers? Well, they're fundamentally quite a bit different from your other types of headphones or speakers, which normally have like a speaker cone or a, a driver with uh, that is magnetic, has quite a bit of mass to it. Uh... And, you know, they're sort of on the heavy end. They're still light, obviously, but, you know, they're heavy compared to what these are. So, inside stacks or any other type of electrostatic, there is a, what's a diaphragm or what I prefer to call like a membrane because that's pretty much what it is. It's basically a thin piece of plastic that's like thinner than Glad Wrap. It's insanely thin strong and light very responsive and it has a vault so it has like a coating on it that's capacitive and conductive and it holds a charge on this membrane and that charge believe it or not on this this model uh, is 580 volts sitting on your head <laughs> which is uh ridiculous now you can I don't know if you can see through there. There's quite a bit of light coming through like that. So these are incredibly transparent. And it basically, the that membrane has what's called a bias voltage applied to it, which is the 580 volts. And then on each side of it, so you've got your membrane or your diaphragm, whatever you want to call it. And then on each side, there's a stator. And that's a plus or minus, and it alternates. And then that uh, diaphragm will move between them. It'll be like it's a push pull sort of setup. Okay. Now, you might be asking, like, well, why? What's the benefit of this? Well, it's to do with just pure physics and inertia and how light you can make something. A speaker driver, dynamic driver in a headphone or whatever has quite a bit of mass to it. Not not insane, but it's enough. And you have to accelerate it, then you've got to stop it, and then you've got to pull it back, and you've got to do a lot of things. And that creates like a response. And it it's one thing to make bass or treble or whatever. It's something that isn't really measured in frequency response graphs and a, a few other things is how quickly you can go from here to uh, when you want to, when you, you, you've got something really fast happening. And this is the realm of electrostats where they dominate and they always will. 
you can't beat the physics of these things. They are just so fast. You know, you've got this tiny, oh, sorry, this really thin membrane that's just fast, really, really fast. Now, what does that give you? Well, if you listen to things like guitar, strings, uh, piano to a certain extent, acoustic, uh, vocals and whatnot, they have an edginess and a realism to them that you just don't get in other headphones. Other headphones sound muffled or synthetic. And um, yeah, they're just, they're just so, so different. The other part that electrostats are really good at is that they have a... a T uh, sorry, a sound to them that is really airy, ethereal, and open. Because they're so transparent, like sound just goes through them from external, it sort of blends together, and you get this sort of open, natural sort of sound that is quite hard to describe. It's like when you put them on, sounds are just coming from around the room. They don't sound like they're coming from the headphones you have on your head. It's quite a weird thing to to describe. So the but the last part I'll probably touch on with these uh, that makes them so spe special is with the 580 volt sort of this is the idling state that these run at. So and then they apply a signal to the stators depending on how far you want to move. And the voltages are very high all around. So what that gives you is this sort of inky black sound stage and noise floor. There's there's nothing going on in these things. It's just dead quiet when you're using them properly. And it creates this, I like to call it like an inky black background for your music to just play out in. And it's surreal to listen to. So yeah, that that's um just sort of a quick intro on stacks. You've got this nice cable. This cable is very unique because again, 580 volts. So everything it's a different ball game. And you have this crazy connector which plugs into your converter or your your energizer. So we'll, we'll touch on those quickly about what we're actually talking about here. Now, there's two versions of electrostatics. You have what's called Pro Bias, which is on here. So that's 580 volts. And then there's an older type that's used, which is 230 volts. So Pro Bias, Normal Bias. Normal's not really relevant anymore, so we're not going to be going into that too much. But this Pro Bias will become apparent in the upcoming project that we're working on here. So this is the old Energizer that I restored. So this is from uh, 1988. It is vintage, it is fully restored, and it does a really good job with stacks. It's fine, but uh, the biggest downside of electrostatics is bass. And I, I actually think it's probably one of the only downsides to electrostatics. Mainly, I don't, I don't know exactly what causes it, but it's something to do with the membrane, obviously, and how light it is, but it's also to do with the amplification. They, they, they don't need a lot of power in regards to wattage, but they need a lot of voltage very very fast. So that is the point of this project. This works. It sounds very good. It's probably good enough for 95% of people. And you can get these for not a lot of money. But we want to go a step further. So when you, you really, really, really go down the rabbit hole of electrostatics, so you will start to come to very expensive amplifiers like the Blue Hawaii or the KGS SHV Carbon. And 
you are starting to get up into the realm of $10,000 just for the amplifier. And that is where electrostats get their name for being completely out of the league of most people, which is what I am trying to do away with and do sort of a budgety high-end option that you can use to drive these to get the base out of them, in theory. I don't even know if it's going to work yet, but we're going to find out. So anyway, we're going to put this aside and we're going to talk about everything else. So these are converter boxes. And this is what this is really about. So you've got uh, this crazy little box that basically takes a normal amp speaker amplifier. You can use your home theater amplifier. You can use just a stereo amp or whatever. Takes the speaker outputs of that. Um, it goes in the back. Goes into transformers. And basically brings the voltage up to a level that um, stacks can use, that your ear speakers can use. So this is an all original unit, which is fine. And it works, but the big caveat of these things is that they are only normal bias. So 230 volts. And obviously that won't work for pro bias that there is a pro bias version of these but they are really expensive so that is not going to do what we need it to do so i created well i didn't create i followed some schematics that i found online this is the next iteration that i did and this is when this rabbit hole started so i replaced the binding posts on the back, I disconnected the switch here, which was switching the speaker terminals and everything, which is just creating problems. So we've got, you know, it's all done there. Now this board on top is what we're really interested in. So this creates pro bias on a normal uh, SRD7 that would normally not have it. So yeah, these are expensive if you want a pro version. The normal versions are dead cheap. You can get these for a hundred bucks or something. And that's this is what I mean about doing this on a budget. So yeah, I built this board on top based on the stacks uh, schematics, which are still available. And this creates that, it takes AC in and it has 580 volts coming out into here, right? So, <laughs> we're going up the ladder slowly. And just so everyone knows, this is the amplifier I've been using to drive this. It is a topping LA90. It is insanely clean and powerful. Uh, and because stacks are so sensitive, you need something that has a super, super clean noise floor and just has nothing going on in the background. So that's where this comes in. It is a really nice amplifier. Fits on your desk nicely. You can sit the, the unit next to it and there's no problems. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna put that aside. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, you've already got your pro bias. You've got this. You can hook it up to a big amplifier. What's the problem? Well, <laughs> this is when the game starts to get interesting. So this is AC coupled, this um, uh, pro bias thing I did. What does that cause? Well, it creates hum and hum is not good when it's in the background. So you have to use one of these to stop it from humming and this is an isolation transformer this alone drives me crazy because i have to have this under the desk or something and it's not it's just not ideal 
And it also provides safety for this because it's AC coupled and there's not much in the way of safety. They didn't have... Safety wasn't top of the mind back in the the 80s, unfortunately. Okay? So what are we going to do in the upcoming videos? Well, we're going to replace all this with something new. And by something new, we have these. And this is where things get really interesting. Now, these Stax Transformers are not what I would consider garbage. They work really well. These, however, are uh, Lundell, um, made in Sweden, Transformers. They are air core. They are really nice. And they are going to replace everything going on in here. That's the theory, anyway. And this unit here is going to go away, and we're moving to a full DC sourced um, bias system. And I managed to get my hands on this which was insanely expensive. This was about $200 for this little thing. And it makes 600 volts DC at half a watt out of 5 volts. Uh, obviously, this isn't all going to be replaced just with this. We are going to need to do a bit more than that uh, to make sure this thing is safe and it's regulated and nothing can go crazy wrong. But we have these new transformers as well, which should be way better. Now, the plan is to take this other SRD that is a spare. We're going to gut it out. We're going to get rid of all the transformers and everything. And um, we're going to figure it out. We're going to see if we can make these fit somehow. We're going to completely redo the chassis and um, hopefully this is going to sound amazing and it will let me use tube amplifiers, massive solid state amplifiers, whatever I want. I can just use existing stuff which I already have without having to buy a $10,000 dedicated amplifier just to run electrostatics. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, I hope this video made some sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, feel free to ask any questions and I'll go over them in the next video where we're going to start mocking up this to see if these transformers actually work and doing the, the bias setup as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, anyone who's been interested in electrostats you know it, it's a very weird area not a lot of information about them and what you need and how to do it so i hope this helps and i will see you in the next episode see ya